Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to building a simple Arduino compatible circuit. And what we're going to do in this video is see how we can take the chip on the Arduino Uno, the microcontroller, the Atmega 328P, pulled off the Uno board and see what we need to, to support a basic bare bones circuit that we can still program with our Arduino code or the Arduino IDE. And also, before we get started, I want to mention that everything I cover, all the parts I cover in this video, I'll be offering for sale in a kit as well as individually on my website, forstronics.com. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk about step one. So we have the Atmega 328P, which is the chip on the Arduino Uno. And the first thing we want to do is we want to add the bootloader. So what, what is the bootloader? Well, the bootloader is a piece of firmware or software that's on the Atmega 328P chip when you get your Arduino board that assists the IDE on loading your sketch code onto the Arduino chip. Now, when you buy the chip by itself, uh, it will not have the bootloader on it. So what you need is an AVR programmer. And AVR basically stands for the architecture family of the 328P from Atmel. So any AVR programmer should work. There's a bunch of different options out there. For this example, I'm going to be using the AVR Pocket Programmer. So depending on what AVR programmer you have, you're going to make sure that you have the right drivers on your computer and, and just do the basic tutorial for it. The AVR Pocket Programmer that I'm going to be using, I believe I got it from SparkFun. I believe it was like $15 and I had to install drivers, but SparkFun had instructions how to do that. And when you use the programmer, you're essentially going to use the SPI communication interface to program on the bootloader. So before I say the connections, let me mention, to use the chip, you know, to program it with the bootloader, we still need some of the basic connections. So we're going to need, first of all, a clock. The chip won't run without a clock, or the microcontroller won't run without a clock. So let's use 16 megahertz because that's what you used on the Uno. This chip can actually take a range of frequencies. Um, if you want to use something else besides 16 megahertz, refer to the data sheet. So you can either use a 16 megahertz oscillator or a 16 megahertz resonator. Now the difference is an oscillator is going to be a little more expensive and you'll need some capacitors with it, but it tends to deliver a more accurate clock. A resonator tends to be cheaper, it's typically integrated into one single part, and it's not quite as accurate as an oscillator. But typically for most applications, unless you're doing tight timing, then it, you won't tell the difference. So for my example, I'm going to use a resonator. On the circuit diagram, the oscillator resonator is labeled as XStall. And basically it's going to have three pins, pin 7 and 8 will connect to the main connections, you don't need to apply any power to it. The chips, the chips inputs and outputs handle that. And then you also have a ground connection for that. And then also you're going to have a ground connection on pin 22, pin 8 if I didn't say that already. And then you have a VCC input. Now for this example, when we load the bootloader, the programmer will serve as the VCC input. So VCC into pin 7 and pin 20. Now, the AVCC input is actually for the ADC, so that's actually optional for programming the bootloader. And then for the bootloader, besides VCC and ground, you'll tie it to the reset pin, which is pin 1, and then to the SPI connections, which is going to be pin 19, pin 18, and pin 17. And then from there, you wire it up, you connect the AVR programmer to your PC via USB, and then what you want to do is essentially select the right programmer. So you'll open the Arduino software and you can just open a blank sketch. It doesn't matter what's on the sketch because what's on the sketch is not going into the, Ar the Arduino or to the, uh, the chip. And you want to select the programmer you're using. So the AVR pocket programmer uses the USB Tiny ISP. So you select the right programmer. Then all you got to do is select Burn Bootloader. You know, the Arduino will signal, much like it does when you're uploading a sketch, it'll say, burning the bootloader, this may take a couple minutes. For me, it never takes a couple minutes, it only takes a couple seconds, and then it should say, you know, done burning the bootloader. I will mention, on my website, forstronics.com, I'll be selling the uh, Atmega 328P chip with or without the bootloader. So you can buy it with the bootloader to avoid having to buy an AVR programmer if you don't want to. Let's look at step two. So now we have the bootloader on our chip and let's build our chip up with the basic bare bones needs to basically program a sketch 
and we'll just run a basic sketch, the, the blink sketch. So of course we're going to need our clock and our, our connections VCC. We'll want VCC to go into pin 20 AVCC. That'll serve as our ADC reference. So I have some videos on understanding how the ADC works if you're interested in that. Just to note, your, your measurements won't work unless you input VCC into the AVCC pin 20. Okay, what else do we need? Well, the reset pin. First of all, we're going to need a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And so we'll click, connect that between the reset pin and VCC. And what this does is it drives the reset pin to high. As long as the reset pin is at high, it's not going to reset. You would then have to drive it to low to reset. So this is optional, but you may want to add a switch between the reset pin and ground, and that can serve as a reset push button. Then the next thing I have on there is at pin 13, now this is optional, is I have a resistor and an LED. So I'm using a 180 ohm resistor with an LED. I'll show the blink sketch, so we need the LED on there. Uh, but once again, it's optional for the circuit setup. The next thing is we want to make sure we're able to program the chip. Now on Arduino boards like the Uno, there's a built-in chip that handles the USB to serial connection for programming sketches onto our chip. So we're not going to have that here, so we need an FDI or USB to serial board or cable. And you want to make sure it has all these connections. Ground and CTS, you can ignore and just tie them both to ground. You know, VCC will serve as the VCC. Transmit, you're going to want to tie to pin 2 of the chip, which is the receive, serial receive. And then, of course, receive on the FTDI. You want to tie it to transmit, which is pin 3. And then the RTS, which depending on what FTDI board you're using, may be labeled as, I think, DTR. But that should be tied through a 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitor. So both those values I just said are the same thing. But if you're looking around for that capacitor, it might be labeled as either 100 nanofarads or 0.1 microfarads. So this is going to allow us to program the Arduino. And once we program it, we can remove the FTDI parts, but that's what's needed to do that. And essentially the, the cap serves as a way to pull the reset low when it's doing the communication and you need to reset the chip. So that's a necessary connection for this to work or else you won't be able to program the, the Arduino from, from the uh, Arduino IDE. Now some things to note. You can reduce ADC noise by connecting a 100 nanofarad or 0.1 microfarad cap between AVCC pin and ground. That'll short the high frequency noise to ground, so clean up the ADC noise level so it'll have more accuracy. Also a note is you don't have to power this with 5 volts. If you look at the Atmega328P data sheet, it actually can work from 0.9 volts, excuse me, 1.9 volts to 5 volts. So if you wanted to power it at or run it at 2.1 volts, 3.3 volts, you can do that. Just keep in mind the digital logic and the ADC measurements will only go up to whatever you set VCC to. Okay, let's look at step three. In step three, I'm just going to show an example of programming our first sketch onto the chip. I'm going to program on the blink sketch. So here you can see my hand holding the board. I'll rotate the board around a bit so you can see everything. Let me stop it right here. Here's my resonator behind these wires. Here's my resistor in the LED, and it's kind of a blurry pick. Let me do here. Here's my 10K ohm resistor, and here is my capacitor, and of course, here is my FTDI board. So let's go over to the PC, and all I'm going to do is I have the blink sketch set up. You're going to want to go in and make sure, of course, we're using the UNO board profile, so make sure you have UNO selected. Then you want to have the COM port that the FTDI chip is connected to. I'm going to hit upload. You're going to see a quick flash of the LED both on the board. There it is. And so it's programming the sketch. And here goes the sketch. You can see it running. It's running the blink sketch. So it's just blinking every second or so. There we go. We took a blank Atmega 328P chip and we basically created the bare bones infrastructure to allow us to use the Arduino IDE to program our sketch you know, free of the uh, the Arduino boards. So that'll do it for this video. If you want to look at how to build your own Arduino development board, I have a 
a three-part video series that goes in more detail and actually t shows you how to add Bluetooth to the board. So that's called Building Your Own AVR Arduino IoT Development Board. And then also, like I mentioned, I'll have a kit of everything I just covered for sale on Forstronics.com as well as the App Mega chip if you want that. I'll also be selling the, um, the FTDI board. Thank you for watching.